What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. Today is another Q&A. If you want your chance to ask a question, then head over to Instagram, follow us, and each Monday we'll give you the opportunity on our story to ask a question. Why do I sometimes get the urge to swallow during deep dives using mouth fill? So that's going to vary from person to person, but obviously I've helped a lot of people to get better at mouth fill and understand mouth fill. Um, and two of the main reasons for this, one would be too much pressure. So you're equalizing using too much pressure. This pressure is pushing against the glottis, which makes you feel like you want to just swallow that air down. The other reason might be um, you're, you're experiencing too much pressure in the lungs. So this would be due to maybe some tension in the abs, holding the chest up, maybe bad posture in the free fall. So if this is the case, you would have to ensure that you're completely relaxing all the respiratory muscles and in a posture which allows your body to compress as the water is compressing it. This will reduce the amount of pressure that you feel and reduce the feeling that you need to swallow the air from your mouth. What's the best dry equalization training for consistent mouth fill? Again, that's another one that's going to depend on the individual. But in general, the more dry equalization training you do, the better your awareness will become of the different elements involved in equalization. And this gives you more chance of being able to problem solve or just do everything correctly in the first place on your diving. Now, if you are reaching a problem consistently at a certain part of your equalization, whether it's with mouth fill or frenzel, then it makes sense to try and simulate that the best you can dry. So let's say if it's to switch from using your mouth and jaw to equalize to using the tongue to equalize, then you should practice that switch dry as many times as you can. So it starts to become more natural and then it should also feel better once you're in the water. If you're not sure exactly what it is that's going wrong with your equalization, or if you're not sure exactly what type of dry exercises to do, which will most directly cross over into your diving and be most specific for you personally, I do now offer distance coaching for mouthfill, where you'll develop a much better understanding of what it is to do mouthfill and what it should feel like in the water and dry and also how to simulate the things that you may well be struggling with so you can have specific exercises to you as well as a general better understanding of what it is to do mouthfill what should i focus on to improve my free immersion again to give specific tailored advice i'd need to see what your free immersion technique looks like so i'll have to give a general answer and generally, people go too slow in their free immersion. Most people are introduced to free immersion as a warm-up, and you'll be doing this warm-up in a really slow and really relaxed way. Now, if you then take that same sort of technique and speed into a deep dive, your dive is gonna take forever. And obviously, the longer you're underwater, the greater your oxygen consumption will be. So it's kind of limiting what you can do potentially. So what I would say is try to make your dives more efficient and more speedy. So the way you would do this would be playing around with the point at which you recover the hand, the point at which you pull, trying to maintain a consistent speed. So what I mean by that is you don't do the next pull after you've basically lost all of your momentum. You try and maintain your momentum throughout the whole dive. So if your dive computer was on your neck weight and you look at the profile, it should be a steady curve. Whereas most people, if you look at their profile for free immersion, they'll be moving, stop, moving, stop, moving, stop. You want to get away from that style of diving. What's your opinion on variable weight dives? Is it good for training? Training, again, it's kind of a general question. And I'll have to answer it in a general way. Some people might not find variable weight dives useful and some people may. But what I will say is if you're building up towards a PB, it makes sense to know you can do as many aspects of that dive as possible. 
And what variable weight allows you to do is without having to worry too much about your dive time. So the CO2 tolerance isn't as much of an issue. Your hypoxia shouldn't be an issue. It allows you to go to what your target depth is going to be over that period, which means two things. One, you can equalize to that depth. And two, you know you're not going to squeeze if you go to that depth. What you can then do is start to use lighter weight or only use variable until you hit free fall and then free fall for the rest of the dive to more closely stim simulate a real dive. Um, but that just depends on the amount of time that you have. It may also make sense just then to switch to using the normal discipline, bring back the depth and then slowly build up to the depth that you're doing. So yes, variable weight can be useful for training, mostly just to build confidence with the depth that you're planning to go to. I'm not sure if I'm experiencing the dive reflex or high levels of CO2 and static. Could you explain how the dive reflex feels and how to control it? For me, the, the dive reflex feels kind of, it's like a, a sinking feeling within my body. I don't know if you can kind of relate to what I'm saying. I'll also feel the blood being pulled from my extremities. Now, the thing is with static is it's triggered by CO2. So both these feelings are kind of mixed together. What you can do if you want to start to isolate and understand what the dive reflex alone feels like is do some RV statics and you'll feel the dive reflex in quite a, a strong way and it'll be much sooner than what your CO2 buildup will be. Also, if you switch to deep diving, you should feel the dive reflex kick in somewhere between 20 and 30 meters, um, which again is much sooner than any CO2 buildup. So it'll help you to start to isolate and understand just exactly what that feeling is. That's it for this week. If you'd like to ask your own question, again, each Monday on our story on Instagram, you'll have the opportunity to ask one. Until next time, guys, take it easy and dive safe.